time on section 1.1. All right, so it says um, simplify the expression 5 times the quantity of x squared minus 2y plus 6xy minus 2 times the quantity of x squared minus 10xy. All right, so, um, so you should distribute the 5. So hopefully you guys remember from algebra 1. You're going to bring the 5 in. So you're going to have 5 times x squared. And then you're going to have minus 5 times 2, negative 2y is going to be negative 10y plus 5 times 6xy is going to be 30xy. And then we distribute the negative 2. And this is where sometimes people will make some errors. Okay, so if you have the negative 2 times x squared, that part's okay. But then it's the negative 2 times the negative 10. A lot of people will say it's going to be the negative 10. So make sure you check here. Or the negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 10 is going to be plus 20xy. So you should have a plus there. So make sure you distribute the negative as well. Okay, then you combine your like terms. So you have 5x squared, and you have minus 2x squared, so you're getting 3x squared. And then you have negative 10xy, or negative 10y, and that's the only thing with y, right? So minus 10y. And then you have 30xy plus 20xy, so you get 50xy. Okay, did everybody get that for number three? Okay, so then number four, same kind of thing. All right, so, so simplify the expression up a little high. So u times 3b, so 3ub. I usually write in alphabetical order, just for when you get later on in math, you're going to have lots of variables. You always want to match them up alphabetical order. All right, then minus u times 6u is going to be 6u squared, so two u's, plus 8uv minus 7u squared, plus 6uv. Okay, then we look for a like term. So again, like terms, same variables and same exponents on those variables. So look for all the things that have u and v. So 3uv, 6uv. Oh, and there's 8uv as well, right? So 9 and 8, so the 17uv. All right, and then you have minus 6u squared minus 7u squared. So you're going to have minus 13u squared. Here. Right, the next one is a little bit different, more of a like a story problem. So it says apples cost $1.50 per pound and oranges cost $2.75 per pound. Okay, and it says let X be your number of pounds of apples and assume that we are buying a total amount of fruit of 10 pounds. So we're going to have 10 pounds of apples or oranges to buy. Okay, so if X is the number of pounds of apples, And we have a total of 10 pounds. Can anybody tell me what uh, the number of pounds of oranges is? Carrie, can you have it? <laughs> yeah. 10 minus x, right. So that makes sense if you think about numbers. Like if you had uh, 4 pounds of apples, you're going to have 6 pounds of oranges, right? You're going to have the rest of the 10 pounds. Right, if I had 5 pounds of apples, I'm going to have 5 pounds of oranges. So you just subtract from 10. So you're going to have number, number of pounds of oranges. Okay, so when it says write an expression for the total cost, um, well, it costs $1.50 for each pound of apples. So if I bought four pounds of apples, I'd say four, and I'd multiply it by $1.50, so I have $6. And we have, okay, so the same kind of thing. So I'm going to have $1.50 for each pound of apple. So I have X pounds, so $1.50X, plus 275, so 2.75, times 10 minus X. Okay, and that represents the total cost. Okay, it's called an expression. It doesn't have an equal sign, so we don't call it an expression, and we're going to simplify it. Okay, so if I simplify, I'm going to distribute my 275 n. So 2.75 times 10, whenever I'm also this, I'm to move the decimal point over, so 27.5 minus 2.75 x. So the dollar fifty plus uh, minus two seventy five. So I'm going to get negative one point two five x plus twenty seven point five. Okay, and this next part says, well, what is the total cost of three of those pounds um, were apples? So if x is equal to three, basically, so we're going to plug in. 
3, 4x. Okay, so when you plug in 3 for x, we're just going to plug it in for the most simplified version. So I'm going to have negative 1.25 times 3 plus 27.5. All right, so I'm going to get negative $3.75 plus 27.5. And I subtract, so if you need to write off to the side, minus 3.75, we're getting to the point where that's nice, you don't need to calculate for everything. You lift off to the side, so 0 0.75, carry your one, so you get $23.75. All the money is going on for you, right? That's right. All right, so $23.75. All right, then I asked for you to find this answer in two different ways. So that's the way using your X is so you can change the amount of apples that you want to buy. If you, let's say you only had $25, you're like, oh, well, now I've got to buy more apples. Um, less oranges if I want to keep it under a certain amount. Um, so let's find the answer in a second way. So what's another way you can find it? Yeah, so you can go back and you can say, well, I'm not going to use all that algebra. So this is my second way. Instead, I'm just going to say, if I have three pounds of apples, they were $1.50 for each pound. And if I have three pounds of apples, then how many pounds of oranges do I have? Seven. So you multiply seven times. 275. Okay, you're going to come up with this answer. So $4.50. And then you can do two, 7 times 275. Huh? Yeah. 19.25. Yep, and then see how it works out, and it becomes 23.75. Same answer. Okay, let's see if we can all right, so let's try the next one. And the next one says that value the expression 2x minus xy plus 4y for x equals 3 and x equals and y equals 3 to 1. Okay, so I really like these ones. Okay. And these can be a little bit tricky if you have negative numbers. Okay, so if you have negative numbers, you're going to have to, I would usually plug them in in parentheses. Okay. So the reason is because a lot of these will have exponents. And when you have exponents with negatives, it's a little bit tricky. So I'll show you an example step of that. All right, so I'm going to have two. Now, positive numbers, you can just do like dot three, like times three. Two times three, like that. That's fine. If you want to do parentheses, that's good as well. All right, and then I have minus, so I'm going to have three, and then times. So now this is going to be a negative number, so I'm going to put it in parentheses. I'm going to do times negative one. All right, and then plus four times negative one. And I follow my order of operations, my please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And we do have parentheses on this, but it's not anything like inside the parentheses where it's like 3 plus 4. This is something you need to identify, right? It's just negative. Okay, so now I just multiply. I know that's not like regular multiplication. So I have 2 times 3. That gives me 6. And then I have minus 3 times minus 1. I'm always taking the sign as well. So negative 3 times negative 1 is going to be plus 3. And then I have 4 times negative 1 is minus 4. So I get 9 minus 4, so my answer is 5. Okay, the next one's a little bit harder. You guys can go ahead and try it. Okay, Q is negative, so I would put it with parentheses. So negative 4, that's the entire Q value, so the entire Q value in parentheses is going to be squared. Plus 4, the entire Q value is negative 4. R is 3. Minus 3 squared. If you like parentheses around the 3, that's fine as well. Like the R value was just 3, so just that 3 would make sense. All right, and you multiply. Well, first we do our own operation, right? So parentheses, inside the parentheses, you just have numbers. You don't have any numbers in the to combine. So exponents. Right, so exponents is next. So I have negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared is 16. And then I have 3 squared is 9. So I have 16 plus 4 times negative 4 times 3, and then minus 9. It's minus 9 because the 3 was being squared, 3 squared is 9, and we've got 9 without front. So. All right, so I have 16. 
I'm going to have 16 times 3, so negative 48 minus 9. So I get negative 32 minus 9. So I believe the answer is negative 41. Negative 41. I didn't tell you guys this yesterday, but if you touch your name for the mistake, you can uh, get a bonus point. So the max of five. Yeah, so you can get All right, number eight. Number eight. I gave you a hint. I said sometimes it's easier to simplify the expression before plugging the numbers in. Now think about this. If you're going to plug the numbers in right now, it's going to be kind of massive. You're going to have b was 2, so 2 times 6 times 3 squared minus 7 times 3 plus 14 times 2. I'm going to turn it in. So we can do that if you want, but I'm giving you a hint, but maybe it's easier, easier to simplify. So let's try that. So let's simplify. Okay, so I'm going to distribute my b in. So I have b times 6a squared, so I get 6a squared b minus 7ab plus 14 b squared, which you need All right, and then the rest of the equation is all the same, the expression. So I have 4a squared b plus 8ab minus 9b squared. Then I combine all my terms. So I look through and I try to find my a squared b term. So a squared b, a squared b. So I have 6a squared b minus 4a squared b, so I get 2a squared b. And I look for my AB term. So AB, AB. So negative 7AB plus 8AB. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1. So 1AB. So you can write 1AB, or you can just write, most people will just write AB. Right? Because basically the number in front of that is 1. All right, and then we look for all the things that have B squared. So all my B squared terms, I have 4B squared and I have minus 9B squared. So that's right, so it's 14 b squared minus 9 b squared. So I get 5 b squared. Okay. Now don't forget, if you simplify first, don't forget to plug in the numbers. So your numbers were a equals 3 and b equals 2. So I have 7, a is 3, so 3 is being squared, b was 2, plus a is 3, b is 2. Is two. So I get 2 times 3 squared times 2 plus 3 times 2 plus 5 times 2 squared. Alright, so we end up getting 2 times 9 times 2. So go ahead and do your exponents. So remember order of operations. Plus 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5 times 4. Alright, 2 squared is 4. I would say you're the formal sum of that five. You don't want to be 10 squared to get 100. Alright, so I get 2 times 9 times 2, so 36, plus 6, plus 20, 42 plus 20, so 62. 62 should be. If you can do it the wrong way, you should get the same answer in the end if you have that Alright, next up. I don't really like that it just kind of, it doesn't want me to like scroll down and get, are you guys caught up? Um, yeah. Alright, so a formula. So you have a class of three, you have plenty of these in the answer, you have a class of formula. You're going to have plenty of them in the answer too. How about proofs? You guys have plenty of proofs in the answer? You have plenty of proofs in the answer too? Okay. Let me go first. I just want to hear the groan. Yeah, no proofs. <laughs> I know, I know. It's exciting time. <laughs> All right, so formula. So it's an equation that relates certain quantities. So this is the formula for the area of the trapezoid. So A equals one half H times B one plus B two. H is always the distance between the two parallel sides. We call those parallel sides bases. So we have parallel sides, which are called bases. Those are going to be B one and B two. Doesn't matter which one. So I'll call the top B one, the bottom B two. All right, and then the height is the distance between the two. So it looks like eight. Alright, so your area is equal to one half h b1 plus b2. I'm going to have one half, my height is eight, 
And then B1 plus B2 is going to be 13 plus 25. So I get 38. So I'm going to have 1 half times 8 times 38. Now, the nice thing about multiplying and string of numbers is you can really multiply these numbers. If you really want to take that 1 half and multiply it by 38 so that it's not 38, it's not so big, that's fine. So half 38 would be great. Right? And then you can take 19 times 8. All right, so it doesn't matter. You can do it in any order. All right, but I'm going to do, instead of doing 1 half times 38, I'm going to take 1 half times 8. And I'm going to get 4. Because I like multiplying by 4. I like the mental math tricks. So I'm going to teach you a lot of these tricks. If I'm multiplying by 4, all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 38 by 2, and then multiply by 2 again. I just multiply by 4. So if I have 38 times 2, 38 times 2 is 76. <laughs> Alright, and then 76 times 2 is 152. So 152 is your answer. So you just did that all in your head. You can also do 38 times 4. Ah, good question. Do we need a label? Were we given, we were given meters. So let's say meter squared. I'll give Jenny a point of balance. It's all I eat, right? All right, so 152 meters squared. All right, we're going to move on to 1.2. Let's go ahead and start 1.2. Okay, so all right, so 1.2 is on properties of real numbers. So I'm guessing that all of these things that we're going to talk about are familiar, like you've heard them before, rational numbers, irrational numbers, you've heard those things before, but you may not know what those things are. So we're going to talk about the different real numbers. All right, so this is a Venn diagram. Hopefully you've seen a Venn diagram before. Have you seen these? Yeah. So anything on the inside, if I have something here, it is not only this thing, but it's also all the things out. You know, it's going to be, um, so like, uh, I'm trying to think of like quadrilateral. So a square is also a rhombus, right, all sides are equal. A rhombus is a parallel, then a parallel, then a quadrilateral. You work your way up. All right, don't worry, we're not going to do those shapes. We're going to do real numbers. All right, so we're going to start with real numbers. All right, so real numbers right now is pretty much anything that you can think of. Some of you may have heard of imaginary numbers. Have you guys maybe heard about imaginary numbers? Yeah, very strange. You're like, why would they be imaginary? Numbers. <laughs> okay, so there are things called imaginary numbers. We're going to get to those like All right, but for now, we're talking about only real numbers. These are pretty much anything we can name. So like, they could be weird. They could be like the cube root of two. The square root of 7 all divided by 5. You could have pi. These are all real numbers. You could have nice normal numbers like 1 or 0 or 3 fourths or negative 7. These are all real numbers. Okay, anything you can really think of. Okay, and then real numbers are going to break up into two pieces. So we're going to have what's called rational numbers. And we're going to have few rational numbers. Okay, so over here I'm going to have rational numbers. And over here I'm going to have irrational numbers. Okay. Irrational numbers are the ones that look really, really strange to you. If you kind of think about the word irrational, like someone's being irrational with you, they're not making any sense, like they're being, I don't know, they're not being reasonable. Right, they're being strange, weird. Right, irrational, we're going to think of weird numbers. All right, so the weird numbers are the things with the cube root, like cube root of 5 or the fourth root of, uh, I don't know, 26. I don't know. I'm <laughs> just thinking of really weird ones. Negative square root of 3 divided by 2. Pi. These are all the strange ones. All right, you're also going to have non-repeating, non-terminating decimals. That's kind of weird. Non-repeating. Uh, non-terminating. The best example of that is pi. Pi goes on forever. There's never like a place where it starts to repeat itself. People 
full benefit of an election and right to time. Right? You might need it as many as possible. Crazy. All right, so I know, like, <laughs> I don't know what you do. All right, so um, non repeating, non terminating decimals. All right, now rational numbers. Rational numbers are going to include numbers like one half, negative three fourths. Right, anything that can be written as a fraction. So think about the word rational. What's the root of rational? What word is in there? Ratio. Yeah, the ratio is within rational. So that's what I would think of. Ratio means fraction. You could also think of the T I O N, fraction. So it's a ratio or a fraction. So any number that can be written as a fraction. So those ones are obvious. Even like irrational, or not irrational, even um, irregular ones. Um, where you have like seven over three. Improper, improper. We call them common fractions these days. You know, improper. Or common. All right, so you have that. What about five? Is five a fraction? Yeah, five is five over one, right? Or ten over two, right? So numbers like five or negative two, these are all fractions. They don't look like a fraction. No, they are. What about point three repeating? Yeah, right. That would work. Point three repeating, right? Because it's equal to what fraction? Well, good. What about point two five? Yeah, that's got a term in any fraction. And point two five is just one fourth. So anything that's going to terminate like that, it stops. Is going to be a uh, rational number. If you think about it, like if I had 0 0.123, well, what does that represent? 123 over 1,000, right? If we read 10 hundredths thousand, so it's 123,000. That's what we need it. So that's what it is 123 over 1,000. Okay, so those are all fractions. All right, so anything that terminates or repeats, you want to write that in there. So terminating decimals, terminating decimals. And also repeating decimals. Some of the other class was asking, well, what's another uh, non repeating, non terminating decimal besides pi? Like, there's lots of them. You could have something like the like 0 0.01, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seven, eight, nine, and then let's say when it gets to ten, it starts one, zero, one, 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 two. There's kind of a pattern to that, but it never repeats, right? Weird. So you can have that. Okay. So rational numbers. So we broke up into uh, real numbers into rational and irrational. So how about from there, we're gonna go integers. Does anybody know what an integer is? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a whole number that's positive or negative. So you're not going to have any of those in between steps with the 4, 2, 5, to 1, half. All right, you're only going to have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but also the negative. So 0 as well. So 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. All right, so you're going to have, so I usually write it negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then I do dot, dot, dot. So you can see it goes off in both directions. Okay, and that's different than whole numbers, which are included within the integers. All right, I always remember integers have N E G. So the N E G in there. They include negative. Whole numbers, I remember, have an O in the middle. The so whole numbers start with zero. That's how you can remember the difference. So whole numbers go zero, one, two, three, that, that, that. Now, my three-year-old, he likes to count. I think it would be really cool as a math teacher if I count on a count really strangely. Like, negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7. I really don't do that because that would really mess him up later in life with math. I think that would be very confusing, right? Wouldn't that be weird? So when he plays hide and go seek with me, how does he count? How does he start out? <laughs> he doesn't start out with negative 10. He starts out with 1, 
and one, two, three, four, and goes on. Okay, ready? Yeah, here I come. All right, so one, when you start with one, those are called the natural numbers because it's natural to learn how to count that way, right? They're also called the counting numbers. So you can call them natural or the counting numbers. And it makes sense why they call them the counting numbers. Right? All right, these are all different numbers. Now we're going to talk about if I give you a certain number. So let's say I give you the number seven. Seven is a natural number, but it's contained with a whole number, so it's also a whole number. It's an integer, it's a rational, and it's real. So you work your way all the way out, right? So seven was a natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. Okay, what if I give you the square root of two? The square root of two is Irrational and real. Yeah, working it out. What if I could do the square root of 25? Square root of 25 is 5, so it's a natural, whole, integer, rational, real. So I'm going to be tricky. 2 root of 8, you guys know 2 root of 8. You know 2 root means, I don't get this video now, but 2 root means what's the number multiplied by itself three times to give you that. So the 2 root of 8 would be 2. So 2 would be a Natural, whole, and the rational, real. All right, so let's try these. So you do have little blanks, you can fill them in. You can do the examples that I go in the circles if you want. Um, so natural numbers, the seven numbers one, two, three that are natural to count. Whole numbers starts with zero and natural numbers. Integers is going to be the whole number, but also their opposite, the negative. Rational number, any number that can be written as a fraction. Irrational numbers are a real number that cannot be expressed as a fraction. And then real numbers, every number that can be expressed or represented on a number line. So if I have a number line, I can draw pi. I can show you where pi is on the number line. It's somewhere between 3 and 4. It's probably really close to 3, right? Three, four, 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 four. Right. All right, so real numbers include rational numbers and irrational numbers. All right, so examples. It says for numbers 1 through 8, classify the following as a real number, rational number, integer, whole number, natural, or irrational. I guess I made 1 through 7, but not 1 through 8. All right, so number 1, the number 8. Start on the inside, work your way out. So it's a natural, whole, integer, rational, real. Good. So a natural, whole, integer, Rational, real. All right, negative seven is going to be a integer, rational, real. And then I told you to circle the most specific input. Like, or, or something that stayed with me since I was a little kid, but I can't say. You have words like that. All right, so we're going to circle the most specific number. <laughs> so natural and integer. All right, so 1.3 repeating. So first of all, 1.3 repeating, that is a repeating decimal, so we know it can be written as a fraction. You guys know what fraction this is? One and one-third. But in algebra two, I'm not going to write one and one-third. I don't like to mix numbers in algebra two. So I like one-third. Okay. So you no longer have to write four-thirds as one and one-third. You're good. You know that four-thirds is one and one-third. All right, so it's going to be rational and real. Circle rational. So is your hand getting tagged from writing all the words? Mm -hmm. There are symbols. You know, yeah. All right, so some of the symbols make sense, some of them don't. So in math classes, we have something we call Chalkboard bold. It's a type of font. It's really strange. It's a math font. All right, we, I, mean, we didn't, I don't know. We only needed a math, but it's a special font that we use um, to represent things. So if I have real numbers, real numbers I write as an R, but then I have an extra stem. So it's like that. So real numbers. 
So instead of writing real number all the time, I write that. All right, rational numbers. Well, we can't use R. We just used it. So you're like, oh, what do we use? We're going to use a Q. Anybody have any ideas why we're going to use Q? Q is for function. Right? Which is what a rational number is. Okay, so Q is going to be um, rational numbers. Integers, this is a weird one. I looked this up one time. I don't remember why it's this, but it's a Z. I'll have to look it up again. So you have your Z with an extra stem. All right, whole numbers and natural are exactly what you think they are. W and N. Extra stem. All right, so number two would be integers would be rational to Q, real is like R. All right, so square root of three. So number four says so square root of three. Square root of three is irrational and real. So people are always like, well, what do you think for irrational? Is it an I? It's not an I. It's weird. You think it's an I, right? Everyone oh, I. Well, integer, I guess people think it's an I. All right, so irrational is actually. Since it's the opposite of rational, in a sense, like it's everything that's not rational, we do this. We do the Q, and then we put a little negative sign as a power. Like it's raised. So it's saying not Q. Weird. All right, so the next one. So zero. Zero is going to be whole. Oh, wait. Zero is natural. What am I doing? No, it's not natural. It's whole. Integer. Rational. Real. Right, so whole number step with zero. Two pi, irrational. Real. And negative one half, what's that going to be? Rational and real. Good. A lot of people will say on that one, they'll say that it's um, integers because I say that little trick, like integers include negative. But remember, in integers don't include the whole half stuff. They don't include half, three fourths, things like that. They only include the whole number of negatives. All right. So, are we almost done? Let me get out of the Oh, man. All right. So, we're done. All right. All right, so continue working on your homework. Remember, it's due on Monday. Okay, I'm good. It's not working.